We are here to bring you everything and anything surrounding Porsche. I'm Mike. I'm Aaron. And this is P Car Talk. All right. Welcome to another episode of P Car Talk. I'm Mike. And I'm Aaron. Bow, bow, bow. And we are at the studio and we want to do some shout outs and thank yous, right, Aaron? Always. All right. Here we go with our Patreon subscribers. Because if you didn't know, our club's locked to 100. The only way you can help us out, Patreon. Get on that. Get on the wait list, though, bro. That's true. That shit's free. That's, yeah, that is free. The freeway is the wait list. Yeah. All right, so uh, I'll start with our producers. We got Brandon J, Eric A, and then Robert G for the producers. Legends. Uh, Legends. Then if you want to step your game up, Ooh. we got Sriracha Boys. We got Sean H., Nikki F., Todd M., Aaron L., Richard P., Scott H., Eric, er, uh, Brian R., Matthew G., and Matthew M. And Richard... I already said it. No. I just did it out of order. Oh, okay. I was trying to pay attention. It's Sometimes it's like muffled. Thank you guys so much. The Hot Boys, Sriracha Boys, the Fiery Poop Boys, all of those things. So we've it's talked not. about it before. As that group grows, I think we may even... Um, don't quote me on this, but this is me saying things sometimes and then they he need does. to happen however that group grows big enough maybe we'll do a specific sriracha boys drive and that yeah. might be kind of dope too idea. so keep growing that group guys because if that grows enough strong we we will divvy out another drive maybe a spring drive yeah, and spring the sriracha, sriracha boys, boys can have a spring sriracha boy drive and that would be kind of dope because aaron and i were talking offline a little bit about that and that would be pretty hot Ha uh-huh, ha, dad yeah. jokes. See what I did there? Anyways, but seriously, um, that is growing ever so rapidly. Thank you guys so much that are a part of that. Um, Aaron, why don't you refresh them and tell them what the, all it's about? Yeah, we'll, we'll tell them what the Sriracha Boys get and then tell them what the producers get because I think there's a lot of people that kind of just like glaze over that when they're 100%. not interested when you're sitting in your office. So you're going to bow, 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 pay attention, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm up now. Um,. So I'll start with the Sriracha Boys first since it's more. So that's our highest tier out of the three tiers we have. 35 a month. What that gets you is the shout out that you just heard. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. But then it leads to our loyalty thing that we got. So it's the first thing you get is a Sriracha Boy uh, decal. And then the second thing you get is a Sriracha Boy poster. And then the third thing you get is a Sriracha Boy t-shirt. And the final is the hoodie. And each of those things are spread out over three months. So three months, six months, nine months, 12 months. Mm -hmm. At the end of the 12 months, that gets you the ultimate thing Mm -hmm. is a shot to get on the drive. Yeah. So you get an invite after you've been in for 12 months to go to the the annual drive. Mm -hmm. Uh, So everybody that's already signed up, they're going to get that shot coming next year, basically, as long as they continue to renew their membership. However, if that grows big enough, they may get their own drive, like we talked about. Yep. And then what do the producers get? So the producers, $10 a month, and they get the shout-outs and a P-Car Talk decal. Yeah, yay. And that happens within like three months. And you're yeah. Done. Yeah. Nice. And then there's the... the then we have the supporters, which are $5. You just some people us, just want to kind of like, yeah, yep. be asleep and they don't want to be noticed, but they just want to kick us a little bit of love to cut you know, pay for those Red Bulls that we got to put down. But anyways, thank you guys so much that are part of that group. And I want to thank all the members. You know who you guys are. A hundred strong out there. That waiting list is growing. Go to pcartalk.com. Get your sign up in. Um, Every once in a while, we have a couple people that do drop out. So pay attention to your emails. Be on that sign up list because Aaron told me like the last time it happened, he shouted out or not shouted out. He emailed out to those people and the minute it fills up, it closes back down. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that are like, oh, if P-Car Talk sending me some garbage or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Sleep at the wheel. And now you're back on the waiting list. Yeah. So I'm telling you, take it serious, right? Like if you want to really be a part of something and go on those drives and get all that good get stuff and all the goodies that we give away, um, sign up, be on that sign up list and be ready to go because we're going to talk on this episode. What ends up happening to you when you go to try to buy a car or you put a deposit down and you're not ready to go. And guess what? You're asleep. Somebody snatched your girl. So, yeah. So don't, don't be that guy oh, or girl. Uh, remi- oh, after the show, remind me to, I have to tell you something. Yeah. Right. Mr. Steal your girl. Anyways, let's get rolling. So 
one of my favorite cars of all time. We're going to discuss it a little bit here at the beginning of the show. I think it's a top five car race car of all time. Obviously, okay. like category wise, it's a top five race car of all times. And I'll give you the reason why, because it has Tell supporting me. stats to go with it. The nine five six race car. Okay. Um, if you don't know what that is, um, it's basically the classic Rothman's livery car that everybody kind of is used to seeing. Originally designed to go for Group C racing, mm. one year into it got bumped to Group B, group B car uh, because it was that powerful, that strong, all that good stuff. So it went into the Group B classing. Um, now in that car, there's a 2.6 liter uh, twin turbocharged flat six producing 620 horsepower. Here's the real badass thing about this thing. Tell all me. of that power. Try to guess what that car weighed. Well, I know. I know you I just looked because I just wrote this out for you, but... Um. What I would guess, of, I would, I would say that it's probably, probably twenty seven hundred pounds. Is what I would look, is mm-hmm. what I would guess. Yeah, I know you saw the answer, so thanks for playing along. Eighteen hundred pounds. This is what this car weighed. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Think about that. That's less than a Miata. Oh yeah. Less than a Miata. Six hundred twenty horsepower. Anyway, so was that like a quote unquote six twenty? Was it like? Well, it could be dialed up. Obviously, it's. When okay. you have a turbo car, you could just change it on boost. This thing competed at that number. Okay. Um, so Derek Bell, for example, um, a famed race car driver. If you don't know who he is, we've been chasing him for a while to try to get him on the show. Um, He's elusive. Yeah, he is. But eventually we'll get him on. He crashed this thing in, in the at the ring in 1984 at 160 miles an hour and walked away from it. So that shows you, even in 1984, this thing had pretty good safety technology compared to to if you would have wrecked a 917, oh, yeah, I was just thinking about he that. would have been dead. Yeah, it's like like sticking like bike parts. Like yeah. the, the bike frame is what it looks like. But that shows you what what 14 years really does because at what, 70, 69, that's what the 917s were kind of around. Mm-hmm. Um, this is 1984. So 14 years of safety technology probably saved Derek's life on that one. Um, thankfully, he did walk away with that. Um, some more interesting things about this car that I'm going to tell you that's really, really going to blow your mind right now. So this car, this isn't so in the comparisons of this, you'll get it here in a second. In 1984, in that same year, during qualifying, Stefan uh, Beloff mm-hmm. ran a 611 at the Nürburgring in this car. Yeah, what is If you don't know what... Insane. Yeah. That was in 1984. Yep. Think about the lack of tech t- tire technology back then. Oh, yeah. That's not even think about about tire technology. Think about the crappy road technology even that the ring was probably in oh, back yeah, then. Oh, yeah, it had to be terrible. It probably wasn't being resurfaced as much as it is now. Exactly. And this dude still rent. So the, you want to talk about balls of steel? This was no paddle shift. He's shifting the car. Oh, that's true. Yeah, back manuals. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to talk about, like, King Dingling, this guy, Stefan was? So that record, and I know a lot we talk a lot of shit about this stuff it doesn't matter but it does matter in this instance because these are actual race cars you know when they test like street cars there none of that stuff matters but like cars that are actually racing at that at at that place time matters so that record stood for 35 years which is insane so you have a car from 1984 it ran a 611 it took a 919 evo in 2018 if you Mm. recognize that name that was a le mans winning car they had to take all of the juice and all of the stuff and they, turn it up on that car they turn it up they pulled to the beat, out of it to beat this time that's what it took to beat this car the 919 evo and that's all carbon fiber all this kind of yep. nuts and all that kind of stuff 35 years later it took it to beat this car and then if you still don't believe me why this is a top five car over a 13 year span that this car ran in great free racing all over the world it won 120 races so it is the most successful a racing prototype car ever to have raced. That's why it's a top five. Oh, wow, that's cool. So, bam. So what do you think about the 956 after all of that? I like it more now. I mean, I've always liked it because <laughs> the Roth Thank you for the history lesson. You're welcome. <laughs> I've always liked it because of the livery, but I didn't, and I know that, that some of it went to the 962. That was mostly a 956, but mm-hmm. a little a little bit of a derivative. Um, but yeah, that's, 
that's always been crazy to me that that record stood for that long and even in that even, car and in that car and even Porsche wasn't beating it exactly and here's another fun fact um, if you have Forza in a simulator or anything like that in a simulator type of deal and you get to pick this car you've driven it I've driven it on the simulator this thing's like glue yeah. on the on the it's roadway weird. because the downforce this thing's makes back in 84 I mean literally we're talking about cars it has the same sticky technology if you go and get in the in the the 919 Evo mm. it feels exactly the same as far from a from a grip standpoint this was the this was also the car that they touted it could uh, ride it, drive upside down yes you'll see that in the factory it's an embodied or it's a fiberglass body mm -hmm. it's all un, unpainted and it's just but, stuck to the ceiling but the interesting thing about that this was an 84 bro you think they're next at it? You back, think to the the future, back to the Future was in the movie theaters, yeah. man. <laughs> I mean, Nine, DeLoreans were crazy. getting made in this thing. Yeah. This thing was a space shuttle. Especially compared to a DeLorean, but yeah. Yeah, it, just in general. I mean, nobody knew what hit them. I mean, that, why do you think it was successful? For It was that so far ahead of the field. Think about that. For 13 years, they, they ran this car. Too. It wasn't even like it was crazy. They ran this from 84 to 97. It works. And it was still kicking ass. And we go, we get to go see this at the Lowenbrow car. We get to, thanks to um, Kevin, Jeanette. Kevin Jeanette, still keeping that car alive, and we get to see that car run at HSR every year, and that's a, such a treat for us. And speaking of the Bells, they yeah, ran yeah. that Lowenbrow car, Both I bells. think, two years ago when we were mm -hmm. there, and watched Justin and his dad while running that car, throwing big old fireballs out the back uh, yeah, as they, it's they going down. The were out there too. Yeah, and I think his son was there too. Gunner was running the car too, yeah. I think, right? Mm -hmm. Um. And just speaking to them, kind of like an off conversation about the car, they were just describing the car. And, and Derek's driven the car for many, many years. Obviously, he was in, in the, <laughs> racing in the high, heyday of this car. And it's still, to this day, he said it still blows his mind how fast that car is and, and how capable that car is. So it shows you, did we get close to racing Pinnacle back in 84 with this thing? I mean, it's pretty insane. Well, it meets the recipe of lightweight and power. Mm -hmm. so. so think about how special these are, right? You and I are fortunate enough to get to see it run many times. Um, there's many people who probably listen to us that will never see this car run. We've talked about this on a prior episode. Do you think one of these is going to be running? Absolutely, 100%. At the, at the or, Porsche, Porsche Motorsports Porsche event. Fest. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I, if, I will be shocked if they don't have that full set of 917s that they had out in California. Yeah. Out there running. Well, as we know, Canapa owns a 956 Coca-Cola oh, livery yeah, car. One. Is he still, still trying to sell it? I think it's it? for sale, but it doesn't mean he doesn't drive it. He think he owns it. But what my point is, is maybe one will be out there. I don't know who. Cool. Maybe maybe the Jeanettes will be up there. The point of this story is you could see a top five of all time, and it could be debated, oh, okay, well, I don't think that's a top five car. But when I, I just told you it's res racing history, yeah. when it's the most winningest prototype ever, do you... You can't tell me that's Man. not a top five car. Facts can't dispute yeah. that. Regardless of brand, I'm not even within Porsche. Regardless of brand, like whatever your favorite is, this car just this car won all the time, nonstop, shutting them down, killing them. That's pretty insane. That is that's crazy that it still holds that it held so many records. Well, I think wins. the most like the two real big ones, obviously, are I, I for me are the 120 races. But that 611 that this car ran and I believe in 84. That was the, it wasn't even just that because now they do, um, well, there's a, the, the testing, the timer's a little different, but I'm, I was almost positive that was that's the full Grand Prix and the Nords Life. It yeah. wasn't even just a lot of the track times now aren't, aren't it, the Grand Prix. Exactly. So, yeah, the they did cars. that on the full gamut, Yeah, which, which is insane. insane to think that, about that. And then to top off all the lack of tire technology, all the benefits, think about what the 919 Evo had on its side that this car didn't have like the tire technology how nice the road was all that kind of stuff yeah, and then he did this during qualifying this wasn't like a free run lap <laughs> when nobody what else oh, was yeah. out he was there oh, was yeah. other cars, cars out there trying traffic. to qualify so he had traffic and he did this wow think about that imagine if he had no traffic what does the, the record look like then but they didn't even care about shit back then like no. that which is rad they probably he probably came back in the car. He's like, man, that felt good. They're like, you felt good. <laughs> yeah, that's like, like Ricky Bobby's. I like, felt like I was on a space shuttle, like <laughs> moving around. No, doing my hands. Is just they're like, you ran a six eleven. He's like, what? 
That sounds good. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm going to drink some beers. <laughs> Anyways, I wanted to highlight that car. We've been doing that. We've been highlighting some stuff um, outside of 911. It's true. Um, so there you go for your outside of 911. The more you know. The Aaron Rainbow. Yep. So, next topic. You can relate to this, Aaron. I so I want you, want you some input on this. I can relate to it because I've been there recently. Um, and I'm sure there's some people listening that are either in it right now or recently in it or thinking about to get in it. So this is actually a va- very valid topic. Buying a Porsche in this market. Yep. Um, it's always been challenging even prior to this market. If it was a hot car, you need to move quick on it, what, ha- what have you. Um, putting deposits down, getting cars snatched out from underneath you when yep. somebody will come in and just, hey, you're trying to get your financing together and somebody's paying cash. Cash is king. We already know that. Sounds very cliche, but it really is. Yeah, it's definitely. Um, So what are your thoughts on, I want you to speak on this a Mm. little bit, the comfortability on moving fast on a car and not getting a PPI or not doing those things or moving slow on a car and end up missing the car. What are your, what are some of your advices? You, you're in the, you're in the mix mix. and then I'll give, I'll give my thoughts and theories. I don't want them. I mean, I don't want to like influence you with my stuff. I I think it would depend on the type of person you are as to like what you feel comfortable. Cause I mean that these days it's not like I'm spending, I mean, I wouldn't say that 70 grand is not a lot of money cause it is, but now we're in the six figures for almost everything. It doesn't matter what it is. Mm-hmm. High mileage, not high mileage. Um, but that, but you still have to take the time to... I say if you, if you don't do a BPI, which I I think you can probably judge it from service history and, and other things. I'd say the PPI is probably not the, the biggest deal for me. But if it being wrecked or, and just, or just finding out the history, I, I think it does... Uh, taking the time to find that stuff out that makes the, the difference in my buying purchase or the speed that I move at, whether I want the car or not the car. And, and even with the deposit, I don't think I don't think that means as much as it may have at one time. I agree with you. I really I don't. actually will take it one step further. A deposit doesn't mean shit. Yeah. As you know, mm-hmm. you've you've experienced it. Yep. Why don't why don't you why don't you elaborate a little so, bit on that? Story? I mean, yeah, I mean, again, so I, I've done, this is what, round two, or at least talking to people, even even if you think you have a deal done, mm-hmm. or on the, the cusp of having a deal done, it can be somebody on the other end, and they're not, not the sales guy's not always forward with you, or telling, hey, we got somebody else looking to buy it, because there's definitely been yeah. times in recent past where like, oh yeah, sure, yeah, we're on that, yeah, cool. Yeah, be a little bit more so, open. So t- tell them what you had a deposit on, and so then what a, got. Um, you don't have to tell the place. Yeah. I mean, like that's okay. Oh, two, well, two cars I had called about. Yeah, uh, people want to hear transparency, man. Be real. These so are the, these are our listeners. The guards. Brother. Well, the first one was the guards' red one. Okay, yeah, that's a great that was, story too. Yeah, you're right. You got two so of them, man, so uh, go for it, please. <laughs> you got the mic. So, so well, I, well, this relates back to your your exhaust. So where, where Mike's getting his exhaust on. And then I was, we were talking, I was like, Hey Mike, what do you think about, you know, we showed, I showed him the car I was looking at mm-hmm. and I had kind of, uh, talked with the player. I, I was trying to email back and forth and turns out I was getting emails, even though I thought I wasn't getting any response. I didn't call at this point. I was like, well, if they're not gonna respond to email, they're not gonna, you know, and I tried calling once before and, and nobody answered. And I, so after that, finally got up, I was like, you know what, Kristen and Mike were like, we're just do school all the place. So I did. Called them like a talk, normal person. Like a normal person. Yeah. Talked through the car. I asked her what had been done. Um, it was, it was okay. But like after talking with them, I was kind of a little skittish about it because it went from it looked great in pictures to like, oh yeah, somebody had kind of had like an accident against the garage and scuffed it up and there's a wheel eaten. But don't worry, we're gonna we're gonna get all that fixed and we get that we'll get that taken care of for you. Um, we're putting new Michelin 4S's on there for you. Oh, we got a new lip. They, uh, we know that that lip, the lip was ate up, mm-hmm. the front lip, but it's, that's common for 9 I was going to say, that's why they're like, that's, cost 200 bucks. Yeah. It's Mine's a, already it's chewed up. Well, this one was like, if you can tell from pictures, is yeah. bad. Um, and outside of that, it looked fine. And I think the, I mean, my biggest things that I keep looking for with those and then the 9 and 6 is if coolant lines are penned. And then kind of LSD, I'm not as concerned about that. I feel like that's been done if it's over like 15,000 miles or Mm-hmm. One of those things. So I thought I had, I, thought I was like called, I was super excited, all jazzed up. Like Put a deposit this, on it? Done. Is that what yeah. you did? Okay. Uh, no, no, not with that one. Okay. I was going to. And I was like, yeah. well, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. Didn't even get that far. Didn't even get that far. It was already, 
by the time yeah. I got back to it, it was done. Got that middle finger emoji, you yeah. know? Yeah, he's like, so, so the car. Yeah, ship sailed, buddy. So apparently, apparently in California is pretty, uh, pretty quick. And then so, so the, that's one, that's, that's one, one, that's one missed boat. Yeah, and so here so comes you're the still next, on the shoreline. Here, here, here comes the next, Aaron, the next Aaron's boat. Aaron's got his next and chance had, to get on another boat. And what had, happens? Well, yeah, this one, this one actually had finance going on, and I had a deposit, so. And I called back about the car, and they're like, oh, yeah, so, well, so, okay, so I was hunting a... Uh, black on black, 996, GT3, mm-hmm. pen lines, guards LSD done. Good looking car. Um, no rack. Mm-hmm. Stock for the most part, I think. I think it was all black. I don't yeah. think there was anything. Um, turbo brakes. Okay. And then, or the red brakes, whatever. And then 44,000 miles is what I had on it. Yeah. I, was, I was all about it. 80, yeah. 85, 9. Yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. And I was like, do you want to pause it? And I was like, oh, I remember what happened last time. Yeah. I learned my lesson. I'm putting the deposit down. It'll be here. Yeah. I'm locking uh, this in. Locking it in. And then, um, <laughs> <laughs> so I was locking it in. And then I go in back and forth with uh, the financing. And the guy was, the guy's good. But it was still kind of like, still back. Oh, I need this, this, this. And I'm going back and forth. So I called what I, what I thought was locked in. Like, <laughs> like so yeah, about that. So a guy from California, well, he's like, oh, he had a deposit on it too. I'm like, so how many deposits are you? you holding here you know that's that's what my thought was and mm-hmm. he's like oh yeah and we sold it this morning i was like all right well so gt3 of some sort so what have you learned from that so what's going to be okay I mean, so I'm like not, you're progressing so like step three is that is it just be in person and just that, well what i'm just it. saying I mean, is i don't know do Make you think happen. that maybe all your financing I think can you just get pre-approved beforehand yeah, and I just kind of say just, like yeah. i have the money and then you just send yeah, them think, the yeah. they wire the money yeah or? that's that's what has to happen okay that's what I, that's that's what i think i'm at the is stage that step where, three now yeah. for you okay just have so it you don't have miss, it already you don't miss the third boat going, basically because yeah. you got to get off the island man yeah you're stuck there at the dock time sticking all of us are sailing so my flip side okay so my my gt3 was at a private seller friend of a friend that no bearing on the car that i got so it wasn't really was it it wasn't really out there or was he looking? no it was it was oh, listed okay. no, it was um he called me and because it was sunday i couldn't wire him all the money because the bank wasn't open so i i venmoed him a healthy deposit mm. to show that i was serious and on the flip side i didn't finance a car i wired him the additional amount of money into his bank account and then flew in the following day and picked up the car in the oh, title yeah. and moved in I so flying the second i wired it but i'm going <laughs> well that was as yeah, fast I, as i could I, get I, the flight because i actually had to go to the bank on monday and actually do the wire the wiring process is pain. so the wire needed to hit before i could go mm. um while that process was it a little unnerving of course it was um however thankfully everything was legit you know i obviously had copy of the title at that point like yeah. he had already sent me all that kind of stuff so like everything checked out um i did some references on him he checked out the car was what it says it was so like i felt comfortable wiring that money is that a unicorn situation yes it is uh, unless you're buying from a friend locally or something yeah. and you know the car never goes out to market what have you those cars uh, on disclaimer were both at dealerships so um aaron didn't say that but i'm saying that yeah, on his yeah, behalf yeah. they were at dealerships now in those situations in a normal market and they're far away too like they were out, yeah one was in texas and one was in, in a Tennessee, normal market so. you probably would have had all day to move on those cars after a deposit no, there's no however problem, yeah. as you know it's nothing for them to give you your money back because things move so quickly and that's why i'm you. bringing this up if you're not in the market and you don't realize this you really don't realize how difficult it is to actually buy a high demand car yeah and if you don't know the gt3 market's not that big yeah i didn't think that i didn't think about that I, that's not something i take into account i was like oh because i'm being uh, uh i guess not a lofty goal but just looking in general i was like well i'm not really i'm never really gonna be in the market i looked around and i always see him always see him but then when you start doing your research and saying, okay, I want this, I want this yeah, color, the, I want the that. Pool, the pool's probably, there's it not is, probably, it is. I shouldn't say probably. Small. I'm going to eliminate that word and say it is small. Yeah, and then that's when you realize, okay, they only made a 1,000 in this car, and mm-hmm. they only made a 1,000 in this car, and, well, that's why you're saying And there's ones. probably at any given point, who knows what the number is because I'm just grabbing at straws here, but there's probably anywhere from there as seven, low as. There was like seven. No, but I'm saying like people. people. I'm saying there's as low as maybe 20 people to as high as 100 people at any given point that are ready to wire money, not even finance cars, ready to wire money on a car 
that they're looking but not looking for. Meaning like if they're sitting around at a bar and they're like, hey, remember you wanted a white GT3? Well, here's one that just came up. And then literally the phone call happens and they're like, give me the bank account information, car's wired, and the car sold that fast. Mm. And I'm not saying that as a good or bad thing. I'm just describing to people that maybe have no idea what's happening in that market right now because it's I the, feel- the it, housing market. I, yeah, exactly. And I would say the only way you probably could have countered that guy's offer, which- I actually tried to do on a car that was being sold from a friend. Mm. I call him a friend, but we're, we're better acquaintances than friends to be in all reality. Mm. He was selling a car. He, he sells cars. He had a guards red nine, nine, three. I was the one uh, I, or yeah, nine, yeah. nine, six, the one I was telling you about, um, GT three. And it had everything that I wanted. It had mm. like nice motion control, freaking yeah, coilovers, yeah, yeah. everything on it. Uh, it was ready to go. It was like track prepped. It had great racing seats but there was a deposit on the car. And I tried to do what that guy did to you, <laughs> the random guy, because yeah. I was a cash buyer. So yeah. I was like, hey, this guy was a do- deposit. He was waiting on a PPI before he could get the car. I told him, I said, what's the compression on the car? So he sent it to me, sent me D- uh, DME report, all that kind of stuff. I saw what I needed to see. I was good. I was like, hey, I will wire you the money. Actually, I'll give you five more grand than you're asking for. But this particular guy, He's a, he was a better stand-up guy than the guy you were buying the car from or, you know, whatever kind yeah, of yeah, independent yeah. dealership your guy. Was. He was saying, well, I'm going to give this guy another day. So I think what he did is he leveraged me like to push this guy hours. to close the sale go no, because go. he knew how serious I am because we are acquaintances. And he was like, all right, Mike is going to wire the money on this mm. car. And he wants it bad and he's going to pay over almost kind of how people are buying houses now it's a great comparison that you brought up people are like oh great you got you got a cash offer for asking i'll give you 50 grand more cash offer and they're like how can you not take that yeah that's true yeah that, that, those offers need you know so i'm trying to put myself in their situation is is good for him for the customer to to keep that rapport and not make that move i also understand from a seller standpoint if i'm selling a car and somebody's saying and I'm, let's just throw a number out there. Say I'm selling my car at 110 and somebody comes to me and I'll give you 125. And I like, I already told this guy, you got it at 110. It is a scumbag move. I will f- totally admit, but how do you not take that additional money that's guaranteed? Right. Personally, I actually have lost money on classic cars that I've sold outside of Porsche, mm. like a couple like C tens that I've had. Then I begged people, I'm like, hey, I got a guy coming tomorrow, and if he buys it, he's giving me asking. He's like, I will buy it sight on scene, and I'll give you an extra 10. And I'm like, man, that sounds great. <laughs> and I really wish you had called well, me I'm, like that, a day more, beforehand. It's definitely a moral decision. That yeah, or it is. Ethics decision. Yeah, for me, I, I'm kind of a, a stand by my word, but don't mm-hmm. don't get me wrong. When I'm trying to buy, like I'll use my purchasing <laughs> exactly. power so, because it's them. To, it's up to yeah. them to make it. Like if he's willing yeah. to take my money, it's not up to me. Mm-hmm. It's up to him to sell it out from underneath the guy, not not my thing. Yeah. If he's willing to take more money and that's influences me, hey, I'm a consumer. I'm trying to get my 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 side of it done. I'm not I'm there's no honor in that. Like I think it's almost kind of like he's the gatekeeper. So it's up to that person to actually handle that part of it. Um it sucks for you who knows how accurate. There's no way to prove that. Oh, no. You know, obviously with okay, well, I've got this car and you know, he his was before you, and yeah. this was. You and know, I there's no way. I don't to, know that. And there was never, like I was yeah. saying. There's no. But the like, point is, yeah. is from in this blood infested water. It's, it's so crazy that that's what I think. That's what gets me the most is how competitive this market is. With I, I just don't imagine it being this like it is. Like it's dark, like blood in the water. Like it it is. is. It's insane to think about, but it, it's you're living it because you're shopping right now and i lived it for a very short period yeah uh when i was trying to buy my gt3 well not 100 percent. turbo s is still for sale um hopefully that gets done sometime soon there's a lot been a lot of like tire kickers but but that's another good car that's out there you know that's hunted and i think a lot of personally my, my theory behind it why it's still for sale is a lot of people don't realize how rare that car is and then there's a lot of people that they go discounted as being oh it's just a little turbo yeah it's just a turbo 996 it's not it's it was hand built like there hasn't been a hand built car since the 993 like that was i mean even the gt3s aren't hand built like that one was hand built well, even though because that, that had to be built off the assembly line like we've talked about before even the, because 997s hmm. were the ones coming down the line yep. so that car was totally hand built it's a 05 996 turbo s 
There are 2005 997 Carreras for sale. Go look them up. They're the same year. So, fact of the day. I think the 993 is like somewhat hand built because they have tooling and stuff. Yeah, there was. But I think I think officially, if you really want to get down to brass tacks from a line perspective, the 964 was the last real hand assembled car. Um, however, a lot of the Turbo S's, which people don't realize, are also hand built because they have to build, be built off the line because that's not what the line is set up for. So all of, there's a special squad of people. That's why there's so few of them that are built that are sitting around building these 996 Turbo S's and shipping them off. It's the Special Forces squad. Yeah, exactly. How unique is that, though? Because you have 997s probably on the same ship or container, and yeah. there's probably like a rando 996 Turbo S in there, and you're like, wait a minute, what the fuck's going on here? Like, <laughs> the these are all the new guys, and like, you're like, yeah, but this is like the soldier right here. This yeah. is the one. So anyways, let's take a quick break, and then we have some stuff to talk about on the backside. All right. We're back from break. So... We talked on some prior episodes about one of Tom Cruise's risky business car, right? That This is not that car we're going to talk about. He owned his own personal car. Uh, he owned a Targa. If you didn't know, Tom Cruise was kind of into racing back in the days of Thunder era. So a little inside baseball with him is like he did putt around a little bit in IMSA at that time. Hmm. However, his insurance, acting insurance, was saying you cannot do both. Yeah. Um, so he kind of dropped out at that point of EMSA stuff and had to focus more on acting. So the more you know, right? But anyways, there was a 1986 uh, Targa black on black that nice. sold on Bring a Trailer for $86,000. Um, had 9,000 miles on the ticker, but it, the true mileage is unknown. So it was a rebuilt and they probably, re, you know, just turned it all the way back. That happens sometimes when they totally mm -hmm. rebuild the car or whatever. Yep. Um, it looks really, really well from the photos of what I could see. The reason why I bring this up is that this goes to show you just because there's star power behind the car, it doesn't have to have an asinine price. No, no I mean, I, I didn't, when you said the number, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't shocking, right? It wasn't shocked by it. Because much. honestly, like there has been other Targas, G-Body Targas that have sold mm -hmm. on Bring a Trailer close to this number and had zero star power behind it. <laughs> I mean, what, so, I'm also, what I'm also hearing is Tom Cruise doesn't like 928s and I support that. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I support that. But yeah, it's pretty cool that this was his personal car, and then this is it's sold. Um, are you shocked that there's no, there wasn't some like price bump on this card? Are wow. you not shocked because maybe it was a target? Like, was this? I think let's play be, this game for a minute. If it it had been a coupe, you okay. think it would have brought a little bit more money? Hundred uh, percent. I think it would have brought more money as a coupe. I still think it brought not crazy money for the target. I mean, the market's up. A little high money, but I do you think it was a clean car too. Yeah. It wasn't like clapped out. So I think that was strong, but I think it was pretty fair for what it was. Yeah, I don't think but I, I think it just proves that Tom Cruise may have just not had the a luster by you know, by his name. It just didn't didn't bump the needle. Yeah. I could care less who owned the car, um, but there are people who shop that. Um there's people that are, oh, this is an ex Magnus Walker car. Oh, this is ex Seinfeld car. Oh, this is a so and so's car. Um I think it's neat. And if you're that guy who probably want or gal who wants to own this car because of that reason, you're probably owning it for the wrong reason too. Yeah, I mean, and that's also, just my opinion. Also, I, mean, I mean, you can hate me if you want. You know where the email's at. Shoot them up. It wasn't a crazy color either, too. I think it, it needed to be not not a crazy color, but just something. I mean, black on black. It's yeah, kind of. Yeah, but I mean, the fact that it was his personal car and he drove it around, I think that's kind of cool. That. I mean, Tom Cruise owned a Porsche, a Targa, like, too. I mean, he could have owned flight anything. Shoot, right? Flight suit, aviators, and like, yeah, I guess, we guess who actually had this car? <laughs> yeah. But you can't you guess. Like go, you like that guy, the Corvette guy, but he goes and gets this huge printout on it and has yeah. it all laminated and has it in front. <laughs> Those are the cars everywhere. and coffee. He's oh, like, yeah. hey, this is Tom Cruise's ex car. Enters it in every PCA thing that he can. His crying and puts like, a flight suit on it. Yeah. Exactly. And he dresses <laughs> as Tom Cruise and he's got the Maverick thing and he puts the little helmet in there. 100%. You all know the people we're talking about. I really hope that kind of person bought this car. Because <laughs> if no, we do, I promise you, those photos will circulate and we will see somebody do that. We will see this car and actually cannot wait to get a good gas out of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but honestly, it just shows you. Do you think his 928 would do better if he had, if that went on auction today? It's going in target? September. Okay. Um, honestly, I, I'm going to chalk it up to who gives a shit. Mm. That's the column I put this in. Uh, it, 
cool. It's a cool thing. Oh, cool. He owned it. Who gives a shit? It doesn't make the car worth more. I think it, I think it'd be, I think it might be worth a little bit more just because of the risky business. Maybe. Cause it was in the movie. Kinda, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. I mean. But I mean, it, it. honestly, it doesn't matter. Like it's, it just really depends, I guess, how much of a fan of the person you are, because prime example, right? Like the Paul Newman Rolex that sold for a couple... 20, 23 million or something. Yeah. I mean, it was his personal Rolex. He wore it all the time. At the end of the day, let's cut the shit. It's a Rolex Daytona. Yes, it's worth probably 150, 200 grand on its own because it's a Rolex Daytona. Is it worth 23 million? I mean, even on its best day, if he didn't own it, maybe it's worth 500,000, but because it was his watch... Does it make it that much better? We talk shit about this all the time. Oh, is the Frog 997 GT3 RS worth that much more because of the color? Drives different. Yeah, it does. That that Rolex probably keeps time different too. (laughs) It's more precise. Yeah, that's the that you jump in that you put that thing on. You're fucking. You're Marty McFly. You're going back to the future. That thing changes. That bends the time, bro. You know, same thing like this. You take the target top off. You're, it doesn't matter. You could be in Florida, but actually it's going to time warp you to Monterey, California, no matter what. Boom. Game on. Like, danger zone plays nonstop. It's like broken. It doesn't even have a thing in the thing. You know, it's just broken nonstop <laughs> danger zone. That. They don't tell you that. They're like, sorry, bro. I yeah. don't know what he, he just really liked yeah. his theme song. I'm just, I've never been an advocate for that stuff. Like, none of that shit matters to me. None so you of that never stuff. buy a car and problem for, what it, it, if it was race prominence, that's different. Yeah, but if because it actually, yes, those guys raced it and that was cool. Mm. But actually, I think the trophy that car won is better. Meaning, like if it was a Le Mans winner, mm. yes, it's cool if say Derek Bell drove that car. Yes, that's cool. Derek Bell drove the car, but actually, would I think before you say anything, when you own that special car, you're going to say it won Le Mans in whatever year it won, as opposed to who drove it. And then the secondary thing is you're going to talk about the drivers. That's just how I feel about it. I mean, I could be wrong. I don't care. Like everybody's entitled to their own opinion. But honestly, I don't give a shit who owned the car. Actually, I'd rather it not be owned by somebody popular and just somebody maybe I knew that took care of the car and had great maintenance records. I don't give a shit. Tom Cruise maybe never got this damn thing serviced, and that's why I needed a damn rebuild. Who gives a shit? He scumbagged this thing all around Hollywood and Beverly Hills and curb checked it and did all this other shit to it. Who gives a shit? You know, he's probably in there getting blowies. Who knows what's going on in that thing? No one knows. Tops yeah, down. exactly. But the point is... I just think there's too much, and this car proves it in a good way. And maybe there's people that just aren't Tom Cruise fans, too, on top of that. Who cares? Whatever. Love and maybe there's just a lot more, you know, Paul Newman fans because he was an actual race car driver. Oh, but that's why I threw the IMSA stuff out yeah. there because he did actually race for a little bit. And then he got out of it because he was kind of – he had to, right? So, And I think Paul was in a different part of his career. Like, you think about, like, Days of Thunder. That was, that was a long time ago. That was in the 80s where – and I was saying that's when he was kind of like playing around in IMSA. He was still on the jump off. Like he wasn't like crushing. Like, yeah, he had been in some big films. But if they were going to drop you and that was your career, what, what are you going to do? You're going to do the right thing and say, okay, cool, I'm not going to go race. Yeah. And like Paul Newman, on the other hand, was like, I don't give a shit if I'm in your movie or not. He had that kind of attitude because he was later in his career, basically, when he started really get into hardcore racing. Yeah, he was writing, writing checks his body couldn't cash. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. I'm actually really sorry I brought this up now. I think it's just gonna hit hit us hit us with all the eighty one liners right now. I'm gonna hit the brakes, it's gonna fly right yeah. by. <laughs> and this is yeah. whiskey, thanks. But anyways, enough about that topic. I think it doesn't matter. That's me, but there are definitely people that'll pay up for Might shit. Be a movie fan and not a race fan, which is Yeah. And there's ton of tons of people that'll pay up and more power to them. So whatever. Moving on, dead topic. So I'm not gonna say who claimed this. But they want to be – I'm going to go ahead and put so-called experts on there. You and I can talk about who actually put this out there offline because I don't want to give them any bad press. But we already know know how (laughs) – He's like, I already know where this is going. Anyways, 2004, 2005 GT3, these people are claiming it as the next 73 RS. I have one question. Do they live live in Smalibu? (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, you know who they are. (laughs) Anyways, how do you so feel the, about so that? RS. Before we even get into, like, I'm going to tell you all the whys and why right. nots why, but how do you even feel Off about that jump. statement just um, in general? Is that I That's a ballsy statement because I, if you want to be a so-called Porsche expert and you say some shit like that, like, you, man, you've got, I, I you got some stones. I rewatched the Chris Harris and Andy Proinger, um 
like when he was walking through and kind of got a sneak peek of the 992. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when they were talking about that, and that's that's the look that they were going for on that on the RS when it was the you know the white and blue or white and red. Yeah, was harkening back. But we're just talking about the nine nine. We're just talking about the GT three. I'm not even saying the RS. They're saying the O four O five GT three is the next seventy three RS. I'm not talking about the RS itself. No, 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 not even close. That's what these clowns are saying. No, why would you even say that? That's not even the the RS is where that that's exactly what it is, but. Yeah, no, not the, not the regular GT3. I don't see it because it it was underpowered. It wasn't even the dot two would be where you would make that claim mm-hmm. if you're going to talk about it. Dot one, absolutely not. Okay, so hey, I just want to see how you felt about that statement. Now I'm going to Strong give you guys apparently. some. I'm going to give you some facts, <laughs> and then I'm going to tell you how I feel about it. Good. Um, so let's do a deep dive on this for a second. So a like people, so everybody listening can have the facts because they probably don't have them all, all right? So let's start with the 73 RS. So 73 RS, they made 200 lightweights of them. Yeah. They made 1,308 Tourings and 55 RSRs. Yeah. Um, so that total around basically 1,600, roughly, um, give or take here or there. So 996 GT3 0405, they made 2,313. Yeah. So already there's about a 800... 700 car difference meaning in favor of the 73 rs to start with yep. okay now i'm not trying to be one-sided with the emphasis on certain words here or anything like that um now racing dynamics on these two cars the r the 73 rs 210 horsepower 188 foot pounds of torque car weighed 2150 and that's in the touring that's not the lightweight ones or the specialty ones that's just the the ones they made the most of um 380 horsepower 280 foot pounds of torque in the 996 gt3 car weighs 3430 pounds or 443 pounds sorry 3043 pounds okay Okay. so a little over 3000 so almost a thousand pound difference Yes, there's a huge horsepower difference. However, it does not matter because even when that car is that light and it produces that kind of horsepower and that revving motor, there's a definite different feel here. Mm. Now, I want to remind everyone from the peanut gallery that is out there about how shitty everyone used to say the 996 headlights were. Oh, my God, this car. Oh, my God, this shit. Oh, my God, that. So all you sons of bitches who used to say these things... You included. I'm in there. Used to say these things about these this car. There is no way that you can compare this to one of the best street driven 911s ever when you were aesthetically bitching about the way it looked. Mm. So you're comparing. You can't compare those two things because the 73 RS is a legend. Yeah, that is a legend, and you're putting it up against a car that's still being made. Like, let's talk about that for a second, because it's still, like, yeah, you can argue, okay, well, they still make GT3 RSs. Okay, they're not just RSs. They're, they don't call them RSs anymore. That's so true. they don't actually no continuation from that. There's a hard break. The RSs, yes, maybe there's a homage there, but that's mm-hmm. not a continuation. So the GT3 has been being made continuously, currently. So it's been that alone is showing you how unlegendary it is. Yes, I think they're special cars. Like, I'm not trying to degrade a GT3, but I don't think that that deserves to be in the same category as this. That's how I feel about this. Because they're saying, oh, well, this is the next 73. Because, and I know the reason why. So, like, I'll fill everybody in who's probably out there bitching and moaning at, in their cars or in their <laughs> offices right now about, like, well, you know, it's narrow body like the other one, and it's it's got the, you know, there's no nannies on it, and da-da-da. And this is probably all the people who own 996 GT3s right now that I've just ruffled their feathers. And to be honest that's with you... specifically Mark 1s? Um, it said 0405, so it didn't say Mark 1, so that's a Mark 2. Mark 2. But anyway, I think they're comparing it because that's what was available in the U.S. Okay. Um, because this is a U.S.-based okay. place who says this. Anyways... Um, I think from that, I get all of that. Yes, I agree with that. And let me remind you, before I bought the 997 GT3, I was hardcore. Like, I was a week out from buying a 996 GT3. Well, there was an also one in Miami I almost bought in a different color. However, I think they're great cars. I think they're phenomenal. 
I think they are, and that was one of the reasons why I wanted to buy it because it was the raw GT3 because it didn't have traction control because it didn't have PASM. It didn't have any of this shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do think they're special. I don't think they're 73 RS special. They are not that car. I mean, I think what they are, I think with the GT3 RS being importable now, I, I don't, I don't see that, that call being the same. I think what, what this claim is trying to say is this car is that special maybe because this was the first gen that's of it. it. Yeah, that's the only, and I've told you this. Edge. I do believe they are special, but let's put this in perspective. If you don't know how expensive the 73 RSs are, they're way up there. Like, I think the cheapest one I saw for sale was like 750, 800 maybe. Like, mm-hmm. a lot of these are going seven bills. Um, the, G, the 996 will, GT3 will never be that. And I can make that claim, and I know I'll die before that happens. I will not, we'll never see a 996 GT3 black on black, like you were shopping, go for a million bucks. No, I don't. Or 800,000, or 600,000, or even 500,000. I don't think it's going to have the 964 revolution as as much as a, uh, as everyone kind of wants to do yeah. that. So what I think, but I do think, and it's already happened, so it's not a very bold statement. Mm-hmm. I think these cars will live above $100,000 all day long. They're already starting to do that. Yep. But I don't think they'll ever be in the stratosphere like that. There's just too many of them made. Yeah, that's not, my... Not the normal GT3s. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the RSs we're talking GT3 RSs of 996 gen. Yes, there were so few. I mean, we're talking about hundreds were only made of those. Well, that's where I would see that's that's where I would draw the comparison to 73. If you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna put your money somewhere and say 73, and but that, I think the reason why this place didn't do that is because that was that was a that was party. a that was a ROW car. Okay, so that was not a U.S. car. So I think that this is the only thing they compare to that car. That is because this was. A all world car, 0405. It was an all world attainable GT3. Um, I disagree with. It. I think it's a special car. I think it's a great car. Um, I think they're fast. They're phenomenal. They're raw. However, it is not that special. Like that's almost comparing a legend compared to somebody who's kind of like, yeah, they're good. They're a Hall of Famer, but they're not a legend. Yeah. Like you're part of the team, but you're not the king. Like for me, this is that's a king car. You're a king when you have that car. Um, not you personally, but this car is one of those. You get a crown and everything. It's yeah, pretty awesome. exactly. Or, or a special belt or special something belt. like that, right? Like championship belt, something like that. Um, but I just kind of wanted to bring that up. So now you have all that stuff. Do you still feel the same way about what, what you were saying? Right, like, you keep trying to reel in the RS I know. and saying like, okay, well, no, you're the I RS. Like, like, that's not on the table. Like, like, get out of here. Like, that's not on the table. Yep. Like. We're talking about the 0405 GT3 because that's what they're claiming, comparing it to the 73 RS. It is those, I, think it's a no. fir- I think it's a first of the water cools, but I don't think that makes it a, a direct comparison. No. I think so. Not. But I, I, I think it's a rad car. Mm-hmm. I think they're awesome. And I still may own one someday. If I get to a position where I can get another one, I may buy another one. I really like manual GT3 cars. I think they're special. They're super engaging. Um, and I would like to own a first gen in addition to the one that I have now because I really love that car. I mean, we joked around about this and we haven't talked about this yet on air, but we will discuss this. There's so much components because it's a Metzger engine when we were underneath that car installing the headers and doing all that stuff. It says 996 on it. So we were actually calling my car as a joke a 996.3 instead of, (laughs) you know, like they have the dot. Instead of a 997.1, basically it's a dot three. It has all the 996 stuff. It's just juiced motor, better headlights and bigger track that's basically all it is you know i i mean there's obviously more into it than that but you guys get the point it's a little bit faster it's a little bit better just like porsche does yeah Yeah, like porsche does with everything this is a continuation of polishing the car to make it better so like when they first started building the gt3 and now we're where we're at now with the 2020 992 gt3s it's just a continuation of polishing that car how do we make this better how do we make it a better scalper how do we make it sharper that's what's happening and that car okay was the third iteration if you want to be technical because there's a mark one and a mark two 996 and then there's the the 997 gt3 um which is essentially a mark three 996 (laughs) makes sense to me because it's still a narrow body car it's a little bit wider track you can fit a little bit wider tire on it um aesthetically pleasing yes like we've talked about before where all these people like oh the headlights yeah because it drives different you know like so 
goes back to that bullshit we were talking about before. People want to pay up for color because somebody else owned the car. Well, I want to pay less because the headlights look less, uh, worse than the other ones. Bullshit. You don't get to pay less. <laughs> Not anymore. Yeah, so I think that moniker. And they everybody, add color. <laughs> yeah. I think everybody's kind of out skis on that. Um, yeah. I mean, I was in that camp for a while. Now I'm like, if it's a GT3, it says it on the back. I'm in there. Yeah, he's he's brainwashed in that area. He's like, well, I'm about to buy a 996 GT3, so I actually love them. Best thing ever. Them them headlights ain't that bad. <laughs> Probably. I mean, and you would... know what? They were, they were on the GT1. <laughs> <laughs> oh, were. now you're the guy saying that? Now you're that guy? My PlayStation Liver coming. I remember when I said that. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I probably can make a direct. You're like Rick James in the Chappelle show. Yeah. When he was like, cocaine's a hell of a drug. And you're like, I don't remember saying that. Yeah, I remember when I said that. That That's you right now with the 996. I mean, the only comparison I could probably make for that GT3 is it's it's, it's probably going to be just like the 73 RS. That's probably what I could say about it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to execute you on site right now. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Oh, man. But in all seriousness, my answer to that is no, I don't think that's a direct comparison. Yes, I think the GT3, the 996 is a great car, but I think that is a slap in the face to the 73 RS. It does not deserve that uh, slap, I don't think. Um, I haven't driven a 73 RS, but I know they're very special. And I know the lighter the car is, the more lively it is. So I know that car is probably a handful to drive, even more so than the 996 GT3. So, because think about the contact patch difference <laughs> in those cars. A little bit. So, yeah, leave that for food for thought. I don't have anything else for for them. Do you have anything for them? I don't. On that bombshell, folks, we are done. Yeah, we are. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of PCAR Talk. Connect with us on Instagram at PCAR Talk or online at PCARTalk.com.